Welcome back, students. Summer 2020, Virtual Melt University. Can you believe that it's week seven? Where has the time gone? I'm really, I'm already, I always get sad uh, <clears throat> in week seven because I know that, you know, we're all about to break up and we're all gonna go back and, and uh, it was, it, obviously it's different this summer in a virtual format, but uh, I will tell you, like I said, I continue to say this, you know, one of the things is this is the most fulfilling thing that I've ever done professionally. Uh, it's been a vision uh, of a dream I've had since I was in Auburn back in the 80s. Uh, and to be able to uh, take this into a virtual format uh, has been so gratifying. Uh, your responses, your sharing, your feedback, your input uh, is so has been so amazingly gratifying as well. And so I uh, also will tell you, as we prepare uh, to go into uh, week eight, uh, it will not be the end of Melt University. It's only going to be the beginning. The Monday thereafter, uh, coming out of Melt University, we're going to begin publishing a weekly newsletter, which will have commentary from me, expert commentary on helping guide you with your careers, your internships, your virtual internships, helping you navigate your return to the college campus and finding those uh, intern and volunteer uh, opportunities on campus. We pointed out, we found a lot of new areas. We're continuing to find a lot of new areas. And so I'm excited to share with you. We'll have a newsletter coming out. We're gonna begin a video series um, helping with you. We'll continue our podcast. The book's coming out on September 15th because as we've all said, this battle that we're in, in a COVID environment is not over and it's far from over. And it's not, it's far from over based on you going back to school, what that environment's gonna look like, how you're gonna secure internships and opportunities going forward and how you're gonna secure jobs going forward, particularly in the marketing services industry, which as we've all talked about, uh, has been very hard hit. And so I wanna continue this labor of love for you, uh, for your colleagues, for your classmates, for your professors, for your career advisors, uh, and continue to share. We have had, <laughs> a tremendous, tremendous seven weeks, some tremendous podcast, and I'm getting a lot of great feedback, and we've got a lot more uh, coming down uh, the pipe, but I'm really, really pleased so far. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's talk about some of our other famous Melt University uh, alumni. Uh, we've had some tremendous ones. One of my favorite ones uh, is uh, Haley Curtis. Shout out to Haley Curtis, uh, LSU graduate. Uh, as many cases as we talk about emotional connections, leveraging emotional connections, uh, her aunt, Meg Reggie, um, uh, big time uh, PR guru in Atlanta, uh, said, hey, I got a really, really great bright niece that's going to graduate from LSU uh, in 15 uh, with a graphic design degree. Would you mind her interning? And I go, no, of course not. And this back in you know, 2015, we didn't have as many interns as we have now. But Haley shows up, and I got to tell you, um, she just rocked the, rocked the house. I mean, literally like was not only an intern, but started really performing and doing some tremendous jobs. She had a tremendous attitude. Uh, she pitched in there. She, she helped us work late. She helped us work on pitches. She's a brilliant graphic designer and artist. Uh, evolved from uh, Melt University and stayed with uh, Melt and me for several years and then got a really big time job at Carter's Inc., uh, which is the big baby clothes company based here in Atlanta and, and uh, up north 75. And uh, is they're really, really doing well. And also has evolved really, really uh, well with her life. She's a great animal lover. She used to bring her puppy in here. And, uh, and I'm just really, really proud of her. But uh, hook up with Haley. Uh, we've had a lot of great LSU participants in this thing, but she can also give you some tremendous um, pointers as well. Uh, another, one, another one of my favorites, Perry Odachowski. Uh, I love that name as well. Shout out to Perry, uh, University of Georgia, Go Dogs uh, grad, uh, came through here, Melt University 2019, and um, I think she was in one of our fall programs or winter programs, if I'm not mistaken, because we kind of do them year round, but really just rolled her sleeves up and really got at it uh, and learned, wanted to learn, had a quest to learn, brought the heat every day, had a tremendous attitude, and uh, Perry <clears throat> is now with Havas, uh, another tremendous agency uh, worldwide and in Atlanta uh, as well. But, but as we've continued to talk about this, parlay this virtual experience, we've talked about how to 
how to pad that resume. We've talked about how to describe it on that resume. We've talked about linking up with these podcast uh, participants and guests and, 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 and leading in with them. We're opening those doors for you because, like I said, that's going to be critical. But uh, Perry's one of my favorites. And then one of my all-time favorites, way back in 2012, uh, Lee Lyons Denzik. Another uh, emotional connection. A uh, friend of mine growing up was a friend of her father's in Huntsville, Alabama. And he said, hey, I had this really, really sharp girl uh, coming out of the University of Alabama, had played tennis, uh, really great attitude, loved sports, student athletes, loved the student athletes as well. And then just came in and dove right in, did a, a tremendous uh, uh, job with us, graduated into our program, full-time employee. And then she had a, a tremendous opportunity to move to Florida to work with the PGA of America, where she was able to put on the PGA championship. She was able to serve as sponsors at the at the highest level and has really, um, you know, is these are great examples. And, you know, you've heard from Ty Votal, Caroline Votal, uh, her father, Rick Anderson. I think his podcast is coming up too, right, Zach? I mean, we got, we got Rick. So careers in the golf professional uh, golf industry. So special shout out today to Haley, Perry, and uh, Lee Lines. And uh, we hope you're staying, you guys are staying well and safe. Um, Tuesday's podcast were, I mean, think about this. This is amazing. Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, the SEC, in the middle of all of the things that he's going through with deciding will SEC football play this year. We, we pray that, that, that it does. We all do. Um, took his time to share his career path and career journey. And amazing lessons. He grew up in, in, in upstate New York, pushed himself out of his comfort zone to move way into Louisiana, to dive in the deep end, to take the job as the golf co coach at a school in Louisiana. And just, you know, he's a, a servant leader. We love those. And, uh, but to, for him to take that time to talk about careers and path and, and his his theories of, of, of these types of things was just amazing. And the president of NASCAR, Steve Phelps, think about this. Think about the compassion, the empathy that uh, these guys during all the things they have going on uh, at the top rungs of their career to take their time to share with you uh, their career path. And today, I mean, Reese Davis, really? The face of ESPN College Game Day, the face of ESPN College Football. Very, very humble, humble gentleman. Uh, Muscle Shoals, University of Alabama, uh, you know, Columbus, Georgia. The path that he took, the risk that he took, calling from a payphone in Columbus, Ohio, to get the job at ESPN. Just an amazing gentleman. And in Shannon Watkins, I mean, what can I say about her? One of my favorites uh, in the – uh, in the world, head of marketing for Aflac, uh, you know, tremendous leader, tremendous path. She talks about, and we've talked about this a lot, like, you know, she went to uh, college with one different career path, maybe thinking she's going to be a, a chemist or a doctor or, or something like, uh, you know, Tia Cummings or whatever. And then all of a sudden she falls in love with, with brand management and brand marketing. And now she is the marketing leader with one of the largest and most recognizable brands in the country uh, and in the world sharing her path. Next week, we've got some tremendous ones. Jordan Bajant, one of the top talent agents in the world. Rick Anderson, head of billions of dollars of media rights with the PGA. Tim Zulowski in charge of billions of revenue with Mr. Oscar Blank's companies, the Falcons, the United, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, uh, Rachel Boucher, who is the executive editor of Event Marketer Magazine. I hope you're following uh, Rachel and Event Marketer to see the new and emerging industries coming out of that. Uh, you know, one of my favorites, Craig Silver, executive producer of CBS Sports. We've got TJ Abrams, who's coming in from IHG, David McKillop, CEO of Chuck E. Cheese, Blake Lawrence of Open Doors. That's another one we talked about you uh, following, Mark Charty. Uh, one of the most prolific Hollywood sports producers in the, in the, in the world, Don Yeager, uh, a famous author. And um, uh, who am I forgetting? Um, uh, anybody else on the docket? 
Anyway, tremendous, tremendous talent on our podcast. And as I told you, we will continue these amazing podcasts because I want to continue uh, connecting you with these leaders. I want to continue inspiring and sharing their path and their story. We're all going to need it together during these perilous times that we're in. We're going to need to help you establish those relationships, those connectivity, open your eyes uh, to many, many new uh, career paths uh, as well. But uh, like I said, this has been, uh, so I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm getting sad, but I'm also excited that we're going to um, uh, evolve our program far beyond next week. And I, you know, I got a lot of uh, uh, resumes in. I hope I've helped with those resumes. Uh, I think Q shared his out on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, Brennan and, and, and a lot of uh, a lot of you guys are sharing a lot of input and, and, and connectivity as well. So let's move into chapter seven of uh, our book. And um, this word is maybe uh, one of my favorite words in the uh, English vocabulary, English language, uh, is be relentless. Uh, that's been a model and theme and thematic of mine probably since I set foot on Auburn campus. Uh, believe it or not, this would have been 40 years ago in September. And um, I, as I've told you, I've related to you, I recognize pretty quick a couple things. First of all, it's the biggest place I'd ever been. Secondly, uh, I recognize there was sort of a caste system there. Me coming out of lower Alabama, small town Alabama, one red light, 800 people. Uh, I lived in a very sheltered existence, an amazing existence, sort of like a Mayberry existence. But when I got there, I was like, wow, look at all these people. And then I sort of, you know, just began to sort of recognize I'm like, you know, there's, there's a, you know, there's sort of the haves and the have nots, whatever you want to say. And I'm, you know, I get a, when I say this in uh, the classes I speak to, I get a lot of head nods on this. Um, but I knew I wanted to be a sports writer. I had a passion. And then I, and then I caught on pretty quick. I'm like, you know, these people are really no different than me. They may have been raised in a different environment, different circumstances and those types of things. But, you know, we were all sort of starting over even though they may have had high school friends there and those types of things and different schools and those types of things. But uh, I said, you know, I, I think I can hold my own with these people uh, from a, from a intellect perspective. Uh, but I recognize really quick. I'm like, I know I can outwork them and I know I can be relentless, but I really didn't know as a freshman coming out of that environment, really what that really meant. Um, and as I've shared with you, I kind of sort of sputtered around that first year, lived off campus, didn't make any friends uh, that were my age and lived in an apartment that kind of had a lot of graduate students and, and everything. And so went home that first summer, kind of discouraged, sort of not knowing the path. And, and as we've learned, that's OK. Uh, I've got a son who's a rising sophomore at Georgia Carter. Um, he's going through the same thing that I went through and you guys are went through. You know, you can, your path's not going to be linear. It's not going to be this, it's going to be this. Like I said, we're all strapping into the great American screen machine again. But, but what I did know is I'm like, all right, I've got desire. I've got a dream. I think I'm smart and I know I'll outwork you. And I'm going to just be relentless in the pursuit of that craft. And I'm like, all right, it might take me a day or two longer to achieve this because I don't have the same, um, you know, advantages that some other people, but I did not let that get me down. Uh, I did not, I've used it as a motivating tool, quite frankly. And then I said, you know, look, I'm going to get up day to day and I'm going to do the best I can. And so as we discussed, my first journalism class was taught by the sports information director, David Housel. We've talked to several athletic directors, and they've enlightened you on brand new career paths within the athletic department. Name, image, and likeness is a big one we've talked about. Uh, mental health is a big one we've talked about. And I'm learning these things as well. Compliance with the rules and regulations because it's going to be a brand new world and helping these athletes navigate name, image, and likeness in a legal way and in a rule-like way within the NCAA enforcement system. Uh, fan safety. Uh, and experience when, if and when we're able to come back and watch our favorite football team play, there's going to be tremendous things. So 
I'm, uh, and we've heard, you know, a lot of content creation. You guys are the masters of that. So my point is, is that there's going to be a lot of great opportunities for you when we go back to school, which are going to continue because then those opportunities are going to translate out into the workforce. And so things I never would have thought about the mental health and those types of things. So I had that great encounter. As we've talked about, you got to take the shot, right? So I walk up to uh, Mr. Housel after class and I said, hey, I want to come volunteer to be in the sports publicity department. And he said, come over this afternoon and roll up your sleeves and, and get to work. So we've, we've talked about taking that shot. Cause what if I had just packed my bag and left class? Where, I, where would I have wound up? What, what would have ended up with my college career? Would I found my niche? Would I found my passion? Would I have been able to uh, build that resume and come out with the 200 articles published in newspapers and magazines and football programs all over the place? But so then I got that shot and I got to the athletic department and like, I'm like walking around with coach die and I'm walking around with Bo Jackson. I'm walking around with Charles Barkley and I'm seeing all these pictures of all these famous Auburn athletes that I had followed as a kid. And I'm like, wow, I, this is the next step. This is the next progress. And there were other student uh, uh, sports information, student assistants in there. And I sized them up. Now, I didn't tell them I was sizing them up, but I'm like, let me just size up who's, who's, who's who in, in here and who's the worker and who's not the worker and who's the face man and who's the front line and, and all that type of stuff. Because what I was doing is I was trying to find my niche within that group of people. And then I was trying to find out who my benchmark was going to be. And then I was going to find out where there was an opportunity or a need gap in there. And then I was going to plug my relentlessness in, um, in, 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 into that space. I, I, I found out, you know, what David Housel, I like, I found out what he liked. Hey, do you, what do you like for lunch? Do you like the sweet tea? You know, so, you know, Hey, I, you know, stopped and picked up a McDonald's on the way in David. Well, you know, coffee, I found out his personal assistant, Reba Gull is one of the greatest human beings alive. Um, I found out what she liked. I started building those relationships. I started building that trust, but it was all packaged in this sort of what I'll call this sort of subtle relentless, relentlessness, right? So um, going back to a macro level, you can't get a job. Jack Buck, famous broadcaster says, you can't get a job without experience and you can't get experience until you have a job. So once you solve that problem, you're home free. It sounds like something uh, Yogi Berra, you probably don't know who Yogi Berra is, but your parents do something that Yogi Berra would say. But so in a nutshell, take the shot. N-O is the, just the first two letters of not yet, not no. Uh, don't take that, that personal. Keep coming back. You're going to crack that code. You're going to find that niche. And then once you do, you have to define your own version of relentlessness. And mine was, I'm going to outwork everybody. I'm going to build this trust. I'm going to build this relationship and I'm going to crash through these doors and I'm going to stay in touch um, with the Dick Vitales and the Paul Feinbaums and all of these famous broadcasters that I'd been seeing on television just a year or two ago or hearing on the radio. And then all of a sudden I'm driving to the airport and then I'm saying, well, Hey, coach Vitale, tell me about you. I mean, this guy was you know, head coach of the Detroit Pistons and those types of things. And, and hey, uh, this is back in the old days, by the way, no cell phones and things. May I have your address? Because I, I may want to stay in touch with you. I want to write you a letter. I want to apply for an internship, send you my resume, connect me with some other people and, 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 and those types of things. And so um, those were my definition of relentless, right? You know, hey, uh, volunteer to go cover Auburn football practice. Somebody needed to write those notes. So I went out there and then I was able to build personal relationships with the football coaches. Then I was able to get my byline published in all the newspapers back in the day, local newspapers throughout Alabama. Then I was able to build that portfolio and then coming out with that portfolio of 200 articles when I came out. So as we've talked about, and I, you know, we've been very, very crystal clear with each other and we've been very honest with one another. Um, it's going to be it's going to be tough in the in the world post COVID. And why is it going to be tough? And in this virtual intern program is an example of that a lot of bigger companies were not. And you know, I've heard I've heard from thousands of kids, a lot of bigger companies were not able to pivot as fast as we were, 
in, in evolving a real internship into a virtual internship program. So you, a lot of you guys were out of an internship and out of going to school and out of summer jobs and those types of things, which would have created a gap in your resume, which is why I think our program has been so well received. But a lot of companies are still going to struggle figuring out what these virtual internship programs look like. So we're going to continue to help educate those those companies as well. But the, the, but but getting virtual internship programs is going to be tough. Going back into a live internship environment is going to be tough because from what I understand in my research and my reading is a lot of companies may not even ever have an office again. So think about that. If you don't have an office, how the heck are you going to do an internship, a live internship program? So we've got to begin reshifting our mindset. And if you don't have an office to come in and do a job interview, how are you going to bring the heat in a virtual interview on a Zoom interview? So this is going to be require an entire shift of mindset as we uh, evolve all of our strategies going forward. But, but with these tips and with these, with these tricks, we're gonna all do it together because it is a, I told you not to be discouraging, be, re be realistic. There's going to be a lot of other job seekers who, are, who had jobs in the marketing services sector and lost their jobs who are willing to take a lesser job for lesser money when that job would have been reserved for you in an entry level environment. So we're going to, it's going to be a numbers game. As I told you, I used the fishing analogy. Back when I was growing up, you had to take a, you had to make a hundred casts. You may have gotten eight bites and you may have landed one or two fish. So what we're doing with the podcast and enlightening you on the campus and those types of things is we're trying to, to inflate that number or that ratio or that percentage, because if you make 500 calls and you get 40 bites, uh, you're going to get 10 opportunities. And then with these tools, you're going to be relentless enough to land one of those out of that 10. We're trying to get you into that, into that uh, top five, uh, top five percent of job consideration is it's just going to be a brand new uh, way of doing all of this. And, and frankly, too, we're all trying to figure this out right now on the fly. Melt is a smaller company than say Coca-Cola. It takes, these big companies, I compare it to, to steering a speedboat to a, to a battleship, it's going to take the companies a lot longer to sort of adjust to this new world order, um, you know, and hopefully we get to the other side of it in one day. But I still think that generationally there's going to be a, a, a giant shift in interns and entry-level jobs and offices and virtual environments as well. And as we always um, say, this is not personal. People say, you know, Vince, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm in the rejection business. I may get told 99 times. In fact, I'm, by the way, I just got a big no yesterday from a client and it stung. It didn't feel good, uh, but it wasn't personal. It was a business decision. They're having to make business decisions as we all are in this environment that they wouldn't normally make. So, so don't get your feelings hurt in this, in this, in this process. And, and by the way, as we've also talked about, it's going to be better to get your foot in the door in some opportunity that might not necessarily be your dream job today, but it may turn into your dream job. Let's, let's use Greg Sankey as an example. Greg Sankey was the golf coach at a small division two or three school in Louisiana. He's now the, the I think he's the most powerful commissioner in college football with the SEC. And so, um, so, and again, as I told you, I got fired from my first job, right? Well, that was another sucker punch. And I did take it very personal because uh, I was broke in Birmingham, uh, but I got back up on the saddle. And so, um, and, and again, being relentless now in this market is going to be completely redefined. But that's why we talk about the LinkedIn tool is, um, is 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 the most invaluable tool there there is, and even if you just spent every day mining the twenty thousand followers or twenty six thousand we have between me and Melt, um, is uh, would be worth. You could spend a lot of time mining that. Now I don't know all those twenty thousand people, but I know a lot of them pretty well. And as we've talked about, another definition of relentlessness is making that emotional connection. What do I mean by that? Parents 
and the friends of your parents or guardians or, or, or whoever and friends of family is the lowest hanging fruit. If I get a note from you and you have an emotional connection to me through somebody that I know or very close to or very fond of, I'm going to respond. But you got to do that research. You got to do that homework. You got to lead into that. Uh, as we talked about alumni connections are low hanging emotional fruit as well. This is part of this relentlessness. We're going to be a big head of relentlessness and all these uh, subtitles of relentlessness. So, so uh, the alumni, let's use Auburn for an example. I'm an Auburn guy. Tim Cook, the CEO of Auburn, of, of Apple is an Auburn guy. Those types of things. Hey, Mr. Cook, War Eagle, you know, uh, I'm fascinated with your career at Apple. Now, will a Tim Cook answer? He's a pretty busy guy, but you never know. But if you don't use that emotional connection, and as we've also talked about, when you get an opportunity, go look at the sponsors of the various athletic programs at the university that you go to. Okay, now what do I mean by that? We talked about this. If, say, I'll use Auburn as an example. One of Auburn's biggest sponsors is a company called Yellowwood, Y-E-L-L-A-W-O-O-D, Yellowwood. It's founded by an Auburn alum named Jimmy Rain. okay? Yellowwood sponsors Auburn in a big way. So if you want a job with marketing for Yellowwood, you're an Auburn grad, you identify Jimmy Rain, you figure out how to, to track him down, you write him an email, you write him a letter, War Eagle, Mr. Rain, thank you for all your contributions to Auburn University. Chances are, now he may not respond, he's a busy guy as well, but he dang sure wouldn't have responded had you not at least put that nice layer of frosting on that cake you built, because you're going to have this great resume, you're going to leverage that emotional connection. So no matter what university you're at, big or small, go to the um, athletic department website, um, and you, you may have to dig a little bit through the site, but it'll say sponsors, or it'll have the, the roster of companies there, and go through that roster of companies, Find out who that CEO is because chances are somebody within that company also graduated, say, from Auburn. So because they're sponsoring the program not only of a business objective, but as an emotional um, uh, hook as well. So the sponsors of the athletic programs uh, of the university and um, take some time to maybe sometimes look at the names on the buildings at your university. I'll give you a great example at the um, University of Georgia. If you look at the business school, Dan Amos's name is on there. Well, who is Dan Amos? Well, he's the chairman of Aflac. If you look on there, a fellow named Doug Ivester is named on there. Well, who was he? He was the CEO of Coca-Cola. So immediately if you begin, and obviously they were graduates of the University of Georgia, but if you begin mining that, you can draw paths into job opportunities at AFLAC through Mr. Amos. Hey, Mr. Amos, go dogs, went to Georgia. Uh, thank you for your contributions to the business school. Heard Shannon Watkins on the, uh, on, the, on the Melt podcast. I know Melt does marketing for AFLAC, the famous Nick Saban spots, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to put yourself in this, in, in, in this position to win. You've got to put yourself, as we say, um, you know, you just want to be in a position to win the game at the end. But this is all sort of under um, the header of being uh, relentless. And so where are we going to find these jobs in a, a COVID or post-COVID world? We've talked about LinkedIn. We've talked about knowing your target. We've, know, we've talked about softening that target. We've talked about leveraging emotional connections, whether it's friends or family or alumni or sponsors or you know, like I said, I'm trying to stimulate you to think about all of these things, um, you know, around you. Let's say if you went to Auburn and Coach Dye was a famous legacy. If you're doing your research on Coach Dye, you'll know that his son, Pat Dye Jr., is a famous sports agent. So if you want to learn about being a sports agent and you want to, you want to work in that industry and you, you went to Auburn or you might have not gone to Auburn, you're a fan of Coach Dye because he coached at other places and he played at other, other, other places. But if you're reaching out to Pat Dye Jr., you're, you're leveraging that emotional connection. But it's all under the, the header of, you know, being relentless. And, and again, I, as I, and I tell you this, and I tell you this all the time, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing that you're doing. It's 
especially now. I mean, the, the world of sports is just now coming back a little bit and live events are not coming back in the foreseeable future. So I'm having to be as relentless as you are, but just as, in a different way and a different level and a different uh, format. And so, um, and then at some point, as we say, hopefully you're going to be able to get off the computer and the phone and actually uh, uh, talk to people. But as we say in the spirit of being relentless, start right now. If you're a rising senior and you, you hadn't figured out if you're gonna to go to graduate school yet or not, but start right now laying the groundwork to either future intern programs next spring and summer, hopefully we're, we're, we've got COVID behind us. Start now on the internship path, start now on the job path, start scanning those job boards within companies that you wanna work for, but don't write the generic reach out to info at Mel, careers at Mel. I'm getting tons of resumes, and you've heard this many, many times ad nauseum, but I'm getting tons of resumes that says, careers at Mel, my name's Joe Smith, attached to my resume, and I need to make X a dollar a year. Guess what? It flushes, right? Because they're, they're show, you're showing me now what type of employee you're going to be. You're showing me in an audition process. And by the way, this is going to get harder because you're not maybe going to be able to come and interview live. And so we've got it. We've got to have all these little bitty tricks of the trade. When you're on zoom, bring the heat. Um, you know, I got my Elton John t-shirt on today, uh, throw, you know, throw back to Elton, but you know, you got to present yourself in a very, very, very positive format because even now through the lens of a computer and, 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 and that it's going to be even harder uh, to do that. So it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a huge numbers game. As we've talked about in the spirit of relentlessness, if somebody doesn't respond to you immediately on LinkedIn, you've either got to change your approach, they're not going to respond and they don't match your value system, or they're, they're playing an Easter egg out there for you, planning an Easter egg to say, all right, let's see, I'm not going to answer this kid for a week. Let's see if he reaches back out. So it's a little test, it's a little audition, those types of things. And so uh, it's going to require... Uh, a tremendous amount of effort. It's going to require a tremendous amount of knowledge and resources. It's going to, and because you got to think about it, all these executives now that you're reaching out to, they're working in a home environment as well. So they may be teaching their kids. They may be homeschooling their kids. They may be virtual learning. They may be pets in the background. They may have 12 Zoom calls in a day, that type of stuff. So, so you've got to begin putting yourself in the mindset uh, of these people as well. And so what are you gonna to do to stand out uh, above that crowd? And then, and then we've talked about in, you know, ad nauseum, um, the follow-up, the handwritten note. Now to a lot of your credit, I'm hearing from a lot of our, um, uh, a lot of our uh, podcast guests that you are in fact writing and following up. And I'm gonna tell you this, um, people are blown away by that. And so shout out and kudos to you all uh, who've reached out and, and written handwritten notes and sent your resumes to our podcast guests. Because I will tell you this, if everybody listening today hasn't sent a personal thank you note to every podcast talent, you are missing a huge mark because that is making a massive impression and a massive connection um, in the realm of uh, follow-up. We had a tremendous feedback from Tracy Wolfson from CBS when she was on and she's responding and she's there to help. Everybody's there to help. We're, we've been in the same boat you've been in pre-COVID. We're in the boat you're in right now as well. So you've got to be relentless uh, in this task. Um, where to find the jobs? Obviously, we talked about knowing your target. Uh, we, we may have to update chapter seven, Zach, in a, in a, in a, in a post-COVID world and David over here um, because uh, you may not be able to reach people in a face-to-face -face, uh, environment. But so we, gotta, we may have to retool this a little bit because it, it, there's going to be a whole new training exercise on securing a, a, a job in a virtual environment, a virtual uh, format, virtual uh, climate. Uh, and uh, we're, we're doing it now. We're talking, we're getting tons of great resumes in and we're having to do these interviews over Zoom calls and, and those types of things. So, so we're looking for little angles within the Zoom interview. So like if you are doing the Zoom interview, not only do you need to dress up really, you know, just, I mean, put a nice shirt on and all that. Be very aware of your background, right? Um, because like, you know, 
if you got something crazy in the background, that may be an emotional cue that something's awry, or that may even distract the interviewer that's interviewing you. And then try to, if you're going to do Zoom interviews and, and, and those types of things too, get it in an environment um, where it, you at least can get some, uh, some peace and quiet. Um, you know, nobody's offended now if there's a, a dog barking or a baby crying in the background, but if you can set it up in a quiet environment, if you can set it up with a nice backdrop, if you can set up with uh, having a nice, uh, you know, nice shirt on or something like that. And then if you can do like we're doing uh, the graphics and, and here's the other thing too, is turn your phone off when you're doing the zoom interview, because um, you don't want it ringing. You don't want it distracted. You don't want to be looking down uh, with, you know, TikTok or something rolling off of there to keep you distracted. Because again, you may not have but one shot at this, at this audition and then build yourself some graphics on, on from your resume. Like I said, when Quentin reposted uh, his resume on LinkedIn, uh, we had coached him through a really pretty virtual format. Uh, he had a lot of, first of all, when he sent it to me, it was a three page word document, um, which it was chock full of great information. And we peeled out, he was an Eagle Scout. We moved that to the front, we got it on one page. We had it in a vertical format. And then we had a lot of other um, information in a, in a, in a horizontal uh, format. And then we've talked about be very, very precise uh, in your ask. Do your research, do your homework. You can define different career and job objectives um, in the header. What do I mean by that? We've talked about that, and I'll pick on Q for just a minute. You know, hey, successful Eagle Scout who trans, who par, who's trying to translate or parlay his love of sports into a sports social media organization. Well, that pretty much says it all. But he's also bragging in a very discreet way. I was an Eagle Scout. There's an emotional connection there. I achieved, you know, great to get the Eagle Scout badges and merit badges and all this type of stuff. You're communicating what you want to do. Like, like, and, and, and by the way, even if it doesn't jive with what the job is or what the, what the, what the organization is, at least you're very specific of, of that outreach. And like when, you know, another pet peeve is when people say, well, what do you want to do? Well, I'll do anything for the organization. As we've heard from a lot of our podcast people, how are you going to bring value to that organization? Well, I learned these traits as an Eagle Scout. I learned follow-up. I learned, uh, uh, you know, I, I, it was a three-year program. I stuck with it. I have this great attitude. I ran my student newspaper, those types of things. You've got you to communicate value to that organization. And like I said, this is uh, applying for a job is sort of a misnomer. It's not an application. It's a process. You know, there's not going to be hardly any, any, any lightning strikes. And there's certainly not going to be many lightning strikes uh, now. And it's a part of getting this great, this great compilation of information. You've padded your resume. Many of your students have reached out and said, how do I describe uh, my virtual melt you internship? Well, I mean, we've talked about it. And a lot of you are doing it now, but, but, but I, you know, one bullet, you know, heard from a podcast of 50 top speakers, including Jim Dinkins, president of Coca-Cola, Craig Silver of CBS, Ty Botol of the PGA, Steve Phelps of NASCAR, Greg Sankey of the SEC. So those are, those are thought starters, those are bullets, and you know, participated in the weekly lunch and learn sessions. And so, because employers are gonna, they're gonna be impressed that you, you took the time of the summer to do an eight week virtual program. They're gonna be impressed you did something you know, their, their expectations of seeing on your, what's on your resume are going to be different because you didn't have those internship opportunities, because you didn't have those employment opportunities, and because they're going to be different types of opportunities if and when you get back to the, to the campus as well. So what we're trying to do is frame up um, how you, um, how you are, are presenting yourself. I'm getting a lot of resumes right now that say, you know, hey, hope you're managing well in this crisis. I know live events are not there uh, right now. Uh, I pray that you hang in there uh, and then, you know, but here's when it comes back, here's how my experience would translate into value into your organization. Because I think also a lot of employers are going to be more willing to hire younger people because you are the most sophisticated uh, consumer of your generation. So uh, I'm talking to a lot of kids right now who are already very sophisticated content producers, right? So, so you're going to move up to the head of that line as opposed to somebody that may not be as sophisticated 
um, you know, uh, in you uh, as, as, as sophisticated as you. So um, I'm just trying to remove all these all these uh, barriers. And as we've said, this the resume is like a blind date. Uh, it's like think about when you drive by a billboard on the interstate. You may see that billboard three, five, ten seconds. Uh, so you got to make that impression. You got busy people who are really even busier with all this inundation of the zooms and virtual office and and trying to figure out what we're going to do with our sponsorships as well. So so you got to have those headlines. You got to stand out. You got to know uh, your target. And even if Jim Dinkins at, at Coke, who's president of Coke, pretty busy guy, doesn't respond. You could say, hey, Mr. Dinkins, I have an interest in the social media space. Uh, do you have a recommendation of somebody from, uh, from HR uh, that I could reach out to? Or do you have a recommendation in your social media department of somebody that I could reach out to? Right? Then, you, then he shares that name. Then let's say it's Joe Smith and social media. And then you write Mr. Smith and say, Mr. Smith, I was in contact with Jim Dinkins through Vince Thompson and they recommended I reach out to you. So what are you doing? You're connecting all those emotional dots to get to that right person. Now they may say, hey, we don't have anything right now. And your follow-up is, thank you, I'll be back in touch. And hey, by the way, do you know anybody else in the industry that might have an opportunity there I might should network with and I might should follow up with because we've talked about this constellation or this pyramid scheme of these emotional contacts because there's no reason um, that, that, that we all can't be in this together now because I can tell you, all the people you're reaching out to, as I've told you, they've been in the same position that you're in. They've been relentless. They've worked hard. Think of the Greg Sankey example. Uh, we're all in crazy positions right now uh, as well. So it, we're all sort of more relatable than we've kind of ever been, not hierarchical, because of the position we're in. Many of our, the people that you're going to, that you hear on our podcast, they have students, they have, they have family uh, sons and daughters who are in the same position that you're in. So in a weird way, things are a lot more relatable right now than they may have ever been when they were hierarchical. So, um, so don't get discouraged. Be relentless in this process. We're going to get to the other side of this. And like I said, I'm so excited uh, to help remove barriers. Uh, like I said, to use that billboard example, uh, the follow-up is relentless and then build that cadence of communication uh, you know, with these people. I'll give you a perfect example. I was watching a, a television program uh, recently and um, this gentleman uh, named uh, Isaac Moorhead came on with a, a, another great student portal called Crash. And uh, I was like, man, that guy's doing some things similar to us and I want to reach out to him. And this is a true story. And, and Zach will attest to this. Literally last week this happened. I see the guy on the show. I'm like, man, I really like what he's saying. Sounds like we got a lot in common. I go to LinkedIn. Now, by the way, this guy is younger than me and a hell of a lot smarter. But I go to LinkedIn. I immediately uh, friend him. And then when I friend him, I've got the premium LinkedIn package. I was able to send him a message and an email. And I said, hey, dear Mr. Moorhead, even though he's probably like 20 years younger than me. I, I just saw you on the program. I really like what you're about. Here's who I am. Here's my business. Here's what I'm doing. Here's my vision for helping kids. Here's my vision for Melt University. Literally within an hour, because I had my, my, my act together on who he was and who I was. He hits me back on LinkedIn. We set a call up together within a day or two. We talk on the phone. We start exchanging ideas. And we're going to wind up doing some great things together. So I'm doing the same thing that you're doing, which is being relentless and noticing all these cues around you. You know, the articles that we tell you to read, the trade industries we tell you, the journals we tell you to read, pick out those names in there. You know, use that as your, you know, hey, Mr. Thompson, I saw you quoted in the Sports Business Journal. You know, find those little Easter eggs within those, uh, within those articles. But uh, um, I'm very, very encouraged about where we're going, you know, together in this. And, uh, and again, I'm very excited for us to evolve this because I want you to continue to share this with your friends and professors and colleagues and your resume and your, uh, your career development offices uh, and those types of things. Because 
in chaos, there's opportunity. And I think this is going to be the greatest opportunity for you guys to level the playing field in the internship and job search uh, going forward. So uh, we're going to open it up for uh, any chat, any feedback, any questions, anybody out there, shout out. It's got a good crowd audience today. What's it like balancing your clients such as Cam Newton and putting on entertainment venues? Well, as I said, the reason I, uh, I love what I do is that no hour is the same, right? And so uh, Cam Newton is different than Jim Dinkins, the president of Coke, is different than Shannon Watkins of Aflac. Uh, so, you know, the beautiful thing about being in our industry is there's no hour, uh, that is, uh, the same. Um, let's see, Chloe. Hey, Chloe Covington. What advice can you give on perfecting your LinkedIn profile when sending requests to CEOs and other professionals? I think the main thing, and I, and I say this over and over again, but know your target very precisely. And I mean, I'm talking about deep and then be very precise in what you're asking them. So for instance, Jim Dinkins, you know, you, you, you would have listened, you'd have known that his father was a Methodist minister. You'd have known he went to Georgia and he, and he was a leader in his fraternity and from an organizational and operational perspective, he gained that experience. You would know that his first job was with Procter and Gamble. You would know that one of these big projects was, you know, NASCAR and Folgers Coffee, which he'd never been to a NASCAR race. And then you know everything about his climb um, within the Coca-Cola company. So the, the advice is be very precise in knowing your target and then be very precise in saying, hey, Mr. Dinkins, um, I, want, I would like an opportunity within social media within the Coca-Cola company. Can you direct me to the right person? So precision um, is the name of the game, particularly, well, at any level, but particularly at the CEO level, because these guys are busy and they're going to want to, and they are going to, uh, um, anonymous attend to you covered everything today, but war damn Eagle, war damn Eagle to you as well. Uh, hopefully we have some football, uh, coming up, uh, pretty soon as well. So, um, I hope that, that pre precision is the, um, is the name of the game. So, guys, uh, week seven, uh, virtual Melt University, summer 2020. What a crazy summer it's been. Um, we're going to get back to school. We're going to get back in the job market. We're going to get back into the internship market. We've got some very exciting plans coming up for you. So, uh, we roll on. Thank you so much.